You're listening to Forward Faster, bite-sized insights for entrepreneurs. My name is Jennifer Burns. I am the director of the Business Insight Center at the Central Library of Rochester in Monroe County. With me today is Kate Meta, the manager of the Carlson Center for Intellectual Property at the Central Library. Good morning. And just quick off the bat, we're going to be talking to you about some services, but we always like to remind people that librarians are like priests and lawyers. Everything that you discuss with us is confidential, and we cannot tell anyone that information without a court order. So your trade secrets are safe <laughs> with us. So, so Kate, who yes. is the Carlson Center for Intellectual Property named after? It is named after Chester Carlson, who was the founder of Xerography, and his daughter has generously left us an endowment which allows us to offer the resources that we do. Okay, so how long have you been manager? I have been the manager for about 20 years. Wow, that's, that's a long time. It is a long so, time. So you know what you're doing. <laughs> so what, what type of training have you undergone over these 20 years? Every year I go down to Alexandria, Virginia, which is where the headquarters of the United States Patent and Trademark Office is. And for about a week, we are uh, trained on new laws that come up, new things that are happening with the Patent and Trademark Office, and um, we're trained by the experts at the headquarters. And I do want to mention that we're a network of the Patent and Trademark Resource Center throughout the country. So there's 86 libraries that offer the resources that we have at the Carlson Center, and each year those 86 representatives go down, and um, it's a great networking opportunity as well. Yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I should mention that one of the reasons that Kate is so good at what she does is because she actually holds her own patent. And so she's been through that process. Yes. It's a long, you know, involved process. So she's done that firsthand. And she also holds copyrights on her uh, two books. Mm -hmm. So um, you're in very good hands. So what types of uh, intellectual property are there? There's quite a few different kinds. There's patents, which of themselves can be divided into three kinds. So you have a utility patent, which is going to protect the functionality of something. There are design patents, which only protect the ornamental look and feel. Um, think about a Coke bottle and how you can recognize it without a label on it. That's a design mm -hmm. patent. And then there's also plant patents, which are uh, protect um, new asexually reproduced plants. Okay. So there's... Um, patents and there's trademarks which are going to protect the product name or a service name for a company mm -hmm. as well as their logo so you think about nike and they have just do it mm -hmm. that's going to be a trademark and the swish and the nike swoosh yep that's or a swoosh. logo that's <laughs> might be swish might be swish <laughs> and then <laughs> i'm sure the word swoosh is actual trademark <laughs> trademarked as well right. anyway <laughs> trademark infringement trademark Jen. infringement right here <laughs> live there's there's also <laughs> trade secrets which are going to protect things that um are to remain secret mm -hmm. Um, and then there's copyrights, which protect the original works of authorship, which do include sound recordings, poetry, books, um, sculptural works, movies, and more. Great. So just for, you know, trivial pursuit purposes. So how many, how many patents are there in the United States? There are over 10 million United States patents. Wow. And uh, believe it or not, the 10th million U.S. patent was granted to a gentleman. His name is Joseph Marone, who went to the University of Rochester. Wow. So we got roots right there awesome. in the 10 millionth patent. That is so fantastic. Um, <laughs> so give me some examples of a trade secret. Like what, what's sure. like what's a famous one that we you know think about? Probably the most famous trade secret is the formula for Coca-Cola. Okay. And you might say, well, I can go to Wegmans and get their, what is it, W-pop mm -hmm. that might taste like it. But if you taste it and do a taste test with Coke, it does not taste the same. So, but can I, you know, you have to list ingredients on a bottle. So True. can I just go and look at the list of ingredients on the Coke yes. and make it myself? Absolutely. But what you're not given is how much of what and when to add it. Okay. So you have so the, the ingredients, but you don't know again. But no recipe. Exactly. No process. There's another one. Uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken's coating oh. is a trade secret, as is the goo in lava lamps. 
No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is something we always talk about. You know, you may think you don't have intellectual property, but <laughs> but you might because, you know, you're yeah. like, it's just goo. But, you know, yeah, oh, au contraire. Exactly. That goo right. is special. Um, <laughs> great. Um, so why is it okay to have like Dove soap and Dove chocolate, even though they're made by like two different manufacturers and sure. two different, you know, purposes? Absolutely. So again, you might go to Wegmans or Aldi and you see Dove soap and Dove chocolate. And they might even be next to each other on the shelf. You, as a common consumer, would not generally be confused about what to grab when you're hungry. You're not going to grab Dove soap. Most common consumers don't take Dove soap if they're hungry. So those two products can have the same name. Their logo can look similar because they don't cause confusion in the marketplace. Okay. When you do trademarks, there can't be that underlying confusion. Um, if I came up with a Dovelet soap, mm -hmm. that most likely would be denied a trademark because it's too close to Dove mm -hmm. and it's the same good. Okay. Um, so why is patent searching so difficult? <sighs> patent searching, first of all, um, you're looking through over 10 million United States patents, and you also have to include worldwide if your market is going to extend beyond the United States. There's also language of patents. Um, the actual term for a bicycle is an occupant propelled land vehicle. Wow. So, <laughs> so, so intuitive. Yeah, totally intuitive. I totally would just type ah. that right in. Exactly. And then... <laughs> For United States and for the world, we use a cooperative patent classification system to organize all the patents. So you have to know that code mm -hmm. or CPC, cooperative patent classification number, and then search through all the patents in that code. Oh, so wow. there, it's it's a big process. Right. So <laughs> what what resources do you have that make patent searching easier? Yes. At the library, we offer what's called a Patent Virtual Assistance Center appointment. And what that means is you can request an appointment through us to speak face-to-face uh, -face virtually with a patent examiner from the United States Patent and Trademark Office. It's a free, uh, free appointment. You just request it. And any questions that you have that I cannot answer, or if you start to fill out an application for a patent and you get stuck, the Patent Virtual Assistance Center can help with that. It's a free, confidential, one-on-one -on -one, um, appointment where you can file share and ask those questions. So how many libraries in the U.S. have this service? There are only six, as, as my last count. Um, and we are proud to offer that service, and it is widely used. Um, we can also help you register your intellectual property. Um, some people may say, well, copyright is granted as soon as I put my pen and oh, paper, yeah. right? Yeah, we have this conversation all the time with people. Yeah. Right. It's, like, it's yeah. implicit. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> not if you want to take it to court. It's exactly. <laughs> right. So, you know, you say, I have a copyright on my book. Yeah, you do. But if you have to um, enforce it, it exactly if you have to enforce it or go after somebody who's infringing on your your intellectual property it's very difficult to do that without having a federal registration All right okay so the virtual assistance with the patent examiner that that helps you with your actual patent application um making sure that you, the forms are filled out correctly the claims are you know make sense your diagrams are in yes. order mm -hmm. so what types of resources do you use to make identifying prior arts easier than using the USPTO database with its occupant propelled, propelled land vehicle yes. terminology. Is there an easier way to do this? Yes. yes. Again, to come down to the library, it's a proprietary database that we use that's called Innovation Q. It makes patent searching easy and, dare I say, fun <laughs> to look through all those millions we of patents. We are so nerdy. <laughs> it is fun it because is. it's a... You can do keyword searching, and it, it works off of a semantic um, search. So you come up with a phrase or a description of your prior art or your invention, and it actually can bring you to the correct information much faster. So what if I, um, I have a technology 
that I've developed. And I want to find out like how novel it is or whether it's, you know, there doesn't seem to be any prior art, but, you know, is it really worth right. going through this process? What's out there that can help me with that? Excellent question, Jennifer. Thank you. Also <laughs> included with our subscription innovation queue is what's called Insight Reports. What that does is offers an unbiased what it gives it a score. It's an assessment. Assessment. An unbiased Let's assessment. Yeah. <laughs> it's an algorithm. It's special. Yeah, exactly. So it can offer you an unbiased assessment of how valid and how uh, viable is your technology in today's world. Uh, with patents, with granted patents, there's maintenance fees at three and a half, seven and a half, and 11 years. And perhaps you, as an inventor or an independent um, entrepreneur, want to see, is it worth pursuing and maintaining my patent rights to mm -hmm. pay those maintenance fees? We can drop your patent number into the Insight Reports, and it gives a score about how viable is this um, technology. Right. There's also a portion of the database that's a technology vitality report. It does the same thing, but with a, uh, what do I want to say? Something that's not been granted a right. U.S. patent yet. So a new technology. Right. Perhaps you're saying, well, do I really want to spend the thousands of dollars on a U.S. patent for this? Right. You can get a score and see how vital it is in today's market. Okay. So, and I probably should have brought this up before. How much does it cost to use the services of the Carlson Center? Excellent question, Jennifer. It is completely free, folks. Wow. Do you hear that? Free. No way. It is. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's free to use the services of uh, the Carlson Center. So that PVAC I was talking about, the virtual appointment, is mm -hmm. free. The Innovation Q access is free. That database can also give you a patent landscape to see who your competitors might be, who is um, patenting in that particular marketplace. Mm -hmm. All this is free. And we also connect with resources throughout the, the community. And again, that initial... Um, Consultation. Thank you. Is free as well. <laughs> so, um, you, so you assist with prior art searches. So, you know, really, what the value proposition is is that you know, say I invent something or I think I've invented something, and there's so much prior art around this. Right. It's really you know, it's not patentable. Right. So, you can assist with that prior art search. That's all free. Yes. Instead of someone going to an IP attorney, Correct. paying them two thousand dollars for them to say you have nothing. Exactly. So, because that's you know, at least when you work with us, you're you're in good shape. You're not going to spend all that money just to have someone tell you no. Right. No. No. Exactly. Yeah. So we, I think you know, we, you know, you guys help people as much as you can, and then when they go to see an IP attorney. Then they are in, they're in good shape. Right. And they're prepared. in much better shape. Yep. Right. And they exactly. know what questions to be asking. And they also understand the terminology, the legalese, if you will, mm -hmm. for intellectual property much better than had they not met with us. Right. Exactly. So one of one of the things that um, people often fail to realize because not a lot of people have read the US Constitution, but uh, patents and intellectual property are part of the US Constitution. That's and right. that's how um, how seriously uh, we take matters of intellectual property. Absolutely. Um, it's your constitutional right to protect your ideas. Mm -hmm. So, and we we met with someone recently from another country yes. that was like, wow, this is a lot more rigorous than the country I came from. And we're like, yes, yes it is. It is. Yeah. It's very serious. So um, anything else? Um, if, you know, if someone wants to help out, help you out, because mm -hmm. you help hundreds of people, you know, get get patents. So how could people help you that have had a great experience with you? It would be most helpful if people could donate to the Friends and Foundation of the Rochester Public Library. You would want to say to restrict any funds to the Carlson Center. And you could check out their website at ffrpl.org. And how do people get a hold of you if they want to if they want to meet with you? Sure. Either come on down to the Central Library and you want to go to the Bausch and Lomb building up to the fourth floor. But we are in COVID-19 era, so make sure yeah, true. check. Yeah, true. Absolutely <laughs> check right. <first. laughs> or you can actually call us at 585-428-8130 or email business.insight. At libraryweb.org. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's business.insight at libraryweb, like spiderweb.org. 
And again, we are from the Central Library of Rochester in Monroe County. We are more than you think. Yes. And thank you so much for tuning in. And we'll be talking with you again soon. Ciao. Thank you.